going to be the show and tell on the fix for the T2, T3, MT3, T3S, Pro Tank. Just going to be taking apart the head. Most of us hopefully have seen this already. So I'm taking the positive pin out. I'm trying to release the grommet. Wow. The whole entire coil and wick comes out. Um, as you can see there, it's just a little tiny piece of silica wick. Alright. Um, in my eyes, silica wick is dead. Okay. I'm not going to build anything else with silica wick, even though I still have some. Okay, so. These can be a real bitch to take out if you just try to lift them out. Alright, so what you want to do to get this out is to just torque it left and right. This way it loosens up in there. It loosens the stranglehold it has. Okay, so no more silica. No more thin wire. I have taken some cotton and boiled it already. And just keep it in a Ziploc bag so it's there when I need it. Okay. No real rhyme to the madness on how I actually make the wick from the cotton. I just kind of roll it and see if it's big enough or small enough. Most of the time it's always too big to fit in there. But if it is, just kind of unroll it a little bit, take a little bit out, try to keep it uniform. So if I take a little bit off, I'm going to try to take a little bit all the way down the line, okay? Just so it's a nice uniform wick. So, I already showed you guys the coil I'm going to use in another video. So, here it is again. Hopefully that will help this go a little bit smoother. Most people know how to make micro coils already. So, that will save us a little bit of time here. Right. Here's something I want to show you folks. Those wires, they kind of just go wherever the hell they want to go. Can't stress to the importance of creating that separation there because basically what you've got is you've got your positive and your negative okay so you want to make sure that you have that separation otherwise when you get it in there you could have some burning grommets and shit like that you know you don't want that and when I make my connections via the grommets and the positive pin I try to keep them directly across from each other so that there is separation So I got my separation, and I have this set in there, and I have this set all the way in the bottom. And so I'm just going to take my grommet, stick it through any one of the two wires, and slap the grommet back in there. Now, when you're putting the grommet back in, take note of the way you took it out to begin with. The small side of the grommet, there is a small side and a larger side, and the small side always goes up in toward the coil. And the reason that is is because the large size side of the grommet is protecting against shorts via the positive pin. So you want to have that separation. And I'm not worried too much about the orientation just yet. But I am going to still try to keep it directly in line. So that means that when the grommet is holding the wire, it is where the end of the coil is. And my needle is holding the coil to make sure that the coil retains its structure. Okay. So now that I've got that one in there, I'm going to just go ahead and slap the positive pin in next. And again, making sure that the wires are hopefully directly across from each other. This is a very important step. 
Okay, so now I've got my connections made, positive and negative. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab my tweezers, and I'm going to grab the wires. I'm going to just pull them down snugly. Snugly, there's that word again. So that the wires aren't just hanging out in there. Okay, so whatever you need to do to get those puppies in there tight is what you do. Okay, so now I'm going to remove the needle and I'm going to use that needle to line up my coil in the center of the head. Like I said, it's a short coil. So there's plenty of room in there, but you want it right in the center so that the airflow going in there hits right in the center of the coil. And then I'm going to stick the needle back in there just to make sure everything is still lined up. If it's not, then I'm going to make it line up with the needle. Now I'm going to leave the needle in there and I'm just going to do the breaking of the wire. And this is the main reason why I say to go with the T3S over the MT3, the T2, or the T3. Because you can do the T3S and the Pro Tank the exact same way. Okay. And it is easier. Okay, so now I've got that all set up. It's ready to rock and roll. And don't worry about me wasting your time on this because there is still a couple of important issues here that I have to go over so that you have a successful wick and coil in a T3S or the Pro Tank. T3, MT3, whatever. Like I said, test your own sanity if you want with the others. But the T3S and the Pro Tank are the only ones that I'm going to do like this from now on. I'm not going to mess with the other ones. Okay, so I've got a good snug coil in there. I've got a good snug wick in there. And so now what I'm going to do, minimize the waste. I'm going to pull it through just enough where I can reuse this. Okay, so here's where the important part comes in. Not the cutting of the, co of the cotton. You do want to cut the cotton short enough to where it won't catch when you screw it into the actual tank. Which I'm sure obviously if you took it apart you've seen where that length was.